for me, Jim? Yes, I did, Joey. I just got your report card in the mail. Report card? H how bad is it? Well, as a matter of fact, it's the very best one you've ever had. Nothing worse than a B. So it seems to me it calls for that little reward I promised you. Now, let me see. Suppose I make it, uh... Well, suppose I make it this 22 rifle of mine for your own first gun. How would you like that, huh? Gee, Jim, that'd be swell. <laughs> Good. Now, remember, this is not a toy. It's a powerful, light-caliber weapon. Yes, sir. Okay, what's the first thing you do? Shoot off a toe, most likely. Ah, oh, Pete. You open the chamber to see if there are any cartridges in the magazine. See that, Fury? I first shot off my new rifle and I hit it. <laughs> What's he afraid of? <laughs> well, I think Fury remembers the rules better than you do. You were pointing the gun at him. Gee, I forgot. But it wasn't loaded. Fair enough. It's the unloaded ones that cause most of the accidents. Remember that now. Never point a gun at anybody. Yes, Mr. Jim. Can we set the can up for another shot? Oh, anybody could hit that target. Let's see what you can do with that poster the sheriff put up. All right, squeeze the trigger now. Don't pull it. Don't take them too far, Pete. Remember, the shorter the legs, the longer the mile. <laughs> this buckaroo can walk me into the ground any day. We'll be back for lunch. All right. <laughs> Be careful. You can't come along this time, Fury. You stay home and take care of things. I'll be back in time to give you your lunch. I reckon it's time for you to have your first lesson in how not to get lost. Take a good look behind you. Now, you can find your way home from here, can't you? Sure. Over that hill. Yeah. Well, when you're in the woods where there ain't no trails, if you look behind you every few steps, you'll always find your way out. Gee, that's something to remember, all right. See that you do. Now, how about that rifle? Safe to catch on? Sure. All right, okay now. Tuck around to your arm, barrel the slanting down, and push through the bushes with your left arm, not the rifle. Let's go.
He wouldn't be this close. He's probably figuring on laying low in the woods until night. That'll give us a chance to surround the area. You get undercover and watch the car. I'll get down to Jim Newton's place and get some help. Look at them. You mean those funny little holes? Them deer tracks. How can you tell? A deer has a clove hoof. Makes a mark like this. Only thing like it in the woods. Looks like there's about four of them. Probably down to Salt Lake. Want to see them? Gee, what I? Come along, then. But real quiet. And don't step on any dry twigs. Hi, Helen. Hello, Jim. Well, so what do I owe the pleasure of this unexpected visit? Well, now, save your pretty speeches. I'm calling on a much younger and handsomer man. Where's Joey? He's going out for his first hunting lesson with his new rifle. But we had a date for an American history lesson to help him pass his exam on Monday, didn't he tell you? Mm, no, I, I guess he must have forgotten it in the excitement. Well, I understand, but I'd sure hate to have to flunk him on Monday. <laughs> oh, you won't. He'll be back for lunch, and you can pour history into him all afternoon. Miss Watkins, Jim, I need your phone. Well, sure, Si. Something going on? Red Cummings, he's holed up in the Willow Run woods. I have to raise enough men to surround him. Jim, you look worried. Well, I am. Pete took Joey around the Willow Run to avoid climbing the ridge, and if they run into this guy Cummings, I... I'm going after them. Oh, wait, you can't go alone. I'm having the men go into those woods from the other side. Can you saddle me a horse, Jim, and I'll go in from this side? You bet I can, and I'm going in with you. Swell. Helen, you wait here. If Pete and Joey show up, tell them to stay put. Gee, they're pretty. Prettiest things in the woods. I couldn't shoot one of them. Tell you the truth, I never could neither. Come on, no sense bothering them. Come on, come on. I'm gonna give you a little lesson in tracking. We'll see if you can follow trails. I see Indians. Just like them. Here's what we do. You stay here and count to 100. I'll take off and leave a trail for you. Marks on the ground, broken branches, rags, all kinds of things, and you're gonna track me. Close your eyes and start counting. One, two, three. Hey, not so fast. Okay. Ready or not, here I come. Hi, you kid. You give him an honest count, and you didn't even peek once. Hey, that's my rifle, mister. It's a nice little gun. Of course, the Winchester 3030 would do me more good. But these high powered 22s pack plenty of punch. Let's get going. Go where? Just where you were going, trailing your old man. Only this time I'm going to play, right behind you. Why do you want to see him? Who are you, anyway? You just do what you're told and nobody gets hurt. Now, hit the trail. Starts right over there by that tree. Hey. It's this way. You see this busted branch? So don't try leading me off. I was tracking deer before Boy Scouts was invented. Now, let's get going. Oh, 
some of my publicity, huh? So then you know who I am. What are all these holes doing in my face? Uh, I was using it as a target. <laughs> sure didn't improve my looks any. All right, come on, let's get going. Well, took you long enough. Red Cummings. Pleased to meet you, too. Smart kid you got here. Knows when the deck's stacked against him. You better play the same way. That ain't no lion gun, but it talks plain enough. What do you want from us? I don't want anything from you but peace and quiet. All I want from the kid is a saddled horse and some grub. I'd have to go to the ranch for that. How far is it? About two miles, I guess. OK, I'll give you an hour. If you're not back by then, I'll have to give my friend here peace and quiet for good. Now get going. I'll run all the way. Wait a minute. One other thing. Don't tell anybody and don't bring anybody back with you. If you want to find this old galoot here alive when you get here. Now get going. Now you turn around. anyone else to feed you but Joey. You miss him, don't you? Well, he'll be home soon. I know he will. Well, I'll just leave this here anyway. Relief, we were worried about you. Oh, Miss Helena, I didn't know you were here. You forgot all about our date for a history review, didn't you? Here, let me make these sandwiches for you. I bet you and Pete are half starved after you tramp in the woods. Yes, ma'am, sure are. I mean, I guess Pete is. I'll get the paper bag. Paper bag for what? For the lunch. I got a ticket back to the woods. Pete's still out there. Well, I'm afraid Pete's just going to have to go hungry. You're staying right here. That's Jim's orders. Why, there's a dangerous criminal hiding in those woods. Jim's gone with the sheriff's posse to help look for him. It's no day for a picnic. But I got to get back to the woods. I promised. I'm sure Pete will understand. And when he gets hungry enough, he'll come home. Now, you get a glass of milk and sit down. And after you've finished eating, we'll go over your history. standing out in the sun. I better go in and saddle him. Look here, Joey, no tricks. I told Jim I promised to see that you stay safely in this house, and that's where you're going to stay. Now sit down and eat your lunch. Yes, ma'am.
Okay, I'll give you an hour. If you're not back by then, I'll have to give my friend here peace and quiet for good. The kid ought to be back by now. If he crosses me, you'll be the first to go. Well, I think that ought to get you through the American Revolution. Now, you wash your hands, and I'll get your work laid out for you in the living room. Tipped him off. All right, I'll give him 15 minutes. If he's not back by then... Peter in some kind of trouble. Where are they? Over in the West Woods. Let's get over there. We've already covered that area. We'll cover it again. Okay, kid. Get off the horse. Where's the grub? Did you tell anybody? No, sir. Good boy. Hey, this is quite a horse you got here. I'm gonna need quite a horse. Won't I ever get him back? Sure, I'll mail him back to you. Can I say goodbye to him? Sure, yeah, go ahead. Now do just like I told you. Keep still till he gets right in the saddle. And buck and give him all you got. He's all yours now, mister. Say, maybe I'd better take you along with me. Oh, no, sir. Sure, these woods are crawling with cops. You'll be good insurance if we run into any of them. But you promised. They won't shoot with you sitting up here. All right, come on, kid. Whoa, boy. Come on. Whoa. All right, come on. Put your foot up there. No, Fury, no! Thank <laughs> you. 
It's about time. Now fire that gun. There, get me out of this. Come on. Joe, I guess I'll have to make a deputy out of you for this. Thanks, Chef. All right, Red, come on down out of there. That was very good, Joey. Now, tell me in a few words the story of Paul Revere. Well, he had a friend in the church steeple who was going to signal him when the Redcoats were coming, by land or by the ocean. Yes, then what happened? So this poor Revere, he watched from across the ocean. And when he saw the two lights in his steeple, he went and jumped on his horse and went off shouting, the British are coming! The British are coming! The British are coming! Well, there's one thing certain. He knows more about history than I thought. The 